good day, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Our webinar today is titled Rising to the Challenge, Constructing the Future Using Advanced Work Packaging. In a world moving towards safer, cleaner, and sustainable energy to meet an increasing demand, the construction industry plays a pivotal role in building this transformation. Advanced Work Packaging, or AWP, offers a solution to reduce waste, enhance efficiency, and lessen the environmental footprint of these construction projects. This also serves traditional energy markets. Joining us today is subject matter expert Dario Rigaud and Srikanth Nagarajan, and they're going to provide an overview of AWP, including debunking four common myths which have limited its implementation to date. This webinar is also going to discuss methods to combine AWP with more commonly known lean and building information modeling or BIM execution methods to streamline construction projects. Now, as is tradition at FLOOR, SRI is going to set the stage for today's webinar by delivering the health, safety, and environmental topic before moving into the main presentation. So over to you, SRI. Thank you, Dave. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to present this webinar to you today. We will begin with a brief HSE topic, which links sustainability and advanced work packaging. Floor's sustainability policy defines our commitment to sustainability as meeting the needs of our client while conducting business in socially, economically, and environmentally responsible manner. The key components of this policy includes helping our client meet energy conservation and carbon reduction goals through the lifetime of the project and industrial facilities, as well as promoting the overall health and well-being of employees, contractors, and suppliers with globally standardized health, safety, environmental security, and welfare programs. As we all learn during today's presentation, AWP supports this policy in several ways. Here are the three reasons. First, efficient resource utilization. As AWP involves careful planning and coordination of construction activities. Second, reduced environmental impact. As AWP emphasizes early planning and coordination, it can lead to fewer disruption and changes during construction, meaning fewer rework and material wastage, resulting in reduced environmental footprints. And third, improved project timeline. AWP reduces the likelihood of delays. Shorter project timelines can be positive environmental and economic impact. By focusing on efficient resource utilization, minimizing environmental impact and streamlining project timelines, AWP promotes sustainability in construction projects. Now let's start with the main presentation. Today, there is a substantial focus on investing in net zero projects over traditional energy resources. So what is net zero 2050? According to Paris Climate Accord 2015, Countries around the world agreed to pursue efforts to limit global warming well below 2 degrees Celsius, preferably 1.5 degrees Celsius, compared to the pre-industry levels. So how is this possible? Emissions should be reduced as soon as possible and reach net zero by middle of 21st century, which implies all industries shall work towards reducing the carbon footprints. And what is the role of construction here? Construction industry must also play its part as well for net zero 2050. An exceptional level of construction is required for achieving this. Net zero 2050 goal signals a necessary transformation in construction productivity. For achieving this net zero 2050, our construction industry must address these challenges. Regulation and transparency. There must be a clear regulation and transparency about the schedule and scope of work which makes the workflow streamlined and make it easy to work. Contractual framework. The contractual framework gives a clear idea on how the job is to be executed, what activity to be done first and what is to be done next, etc. Design and engineering processes. The design and engineering process has to take place keeping the end in mind. They should also consider the construction path and implementing the necessary requirement during design and engineering stage itself. Procurement and supply chain. Procurement and supply chain and design and engineering process should go hand in hand to make the virtual thing into reality. 
the right material should be at the right time at site to ensure the progress in construction. On-site execution. After the design and engineering process and procurement supply chain, it is turn of on-site execution. This determines the actual progress that is to be achieved in construction. Hence, site execution should be well managed to achieve the desired result. Digital technology. Digital technology helps in managing the site efficiency. Tools like smart plan construction, drone videos, material tracker have helped to track the progress at site. Workforce. Finally, managing the workforce is very much important to achieve the desired result in the project. To achieve all these factors, advanced work packaging or AWP become much more important. By implementing AWP in this project, we can achieve the desired progress in the project with optimum manpower and in turn save cost and carbon footprint of the project, which is the main goal of Net Zero 2050. For those who are not familiar with advanced work packaging yet, let's start with a brief introduction. This is to ensure that we start on an even playing field before going into specifics. Advanced work packaging is a methodology to improve CapEx project execution. It was originated by Construction Owners Association of Alberta, which focuses on improving steps in construction. Shortly after that, the concept was adopted as a best practice by Construction Industry Institute. The AWP approaches the root cause of the project overrun and overspread by defining the path of construction at the very beginning of project and then optimizing the plan through a clear, consistent and repeatable process. The AWP process aligns engineering, procurement and construction teams by approaching planning with the end in mind to create shorter, more integrated project phases, drive safe and efficiencies and reduce project risk. Here we are comparing an AWP with a non-AWP project, according to the Construction Industry Institute. As we see to the two pie charts here, by implementing the AWP procedure, the non-productive time has reduced. There is a major increase in the tool time, which in turn increases the productivity by 25% and reduces the tool installation cost by 10%. Basically, the work time increases by implementing AWP. So these are the global AWP program which have been implemented in floor, divided by region. You can see that there are several projects going around the world in Canada, United States and in Europe. So it has and it is well tried and tested formula for floor in all the projects which has been executed. In advanced work packaging, the whole plant is broken down into different construction work areas or CWAs based on the geographical aspects. The CWA is further subdivided into construction work package. This subdivision will be based on various disciplines. All the drawings, equipment list, cable schedule, bill of material, etc. will be tracked based on CWP. Once all the drawings for a particular CWP are available with the latest division, materials are available as per bill of material, then IWP or installation work package is prepared by the work phase planning team and issued to the field. So this is how the work phase planning works. As explained in the previous slide, the plant is broken down into different CWAs and CWPs. This is the first line of defense. Then the IWP scoping session takes place, which where all the required drawings, materials and manpower are checked. An IWP release session is prepared after receiving the ETAs dates of the material and IFC dates of the drawings. A draft IWP is developed, getting all the information together with manpower planning. Any constraints like a particular material is taking time to get delivered or there is a revision of drawing expected, or mitigated and path forward found. The IWP is ready for final review before release to the construction. The IWP is released to the construction and to the warehouse. This is the second line of defense. The contractor commits, could, commits to the schedule and progresses with the activity. The contractor submits the material request the materials are released in a staged manner to accommodate the work. 
short range planning is required on how the work will be executed. This is the third line of defense through weekly plans and productivity boards. Finally, executing the plan to finish the activity. The work phase planning team analyzes the whole progress and closes the activity. A proper analysis is done for the whole activity and room for improvements are worked on. In this webinar, we will address some popular myths about advanced work packaging. To start off with, AWP works only for large, complex oil and gas projects. The second one being AWP only be implemented if 3D models are available. Expensive design softwares and analysis softwares are required. The cost of AWP outweighs the benefits. And finally, AWP, Lean and BIM don't fit together. All these are myths and not true. I will pass it over to Dario, who will help us to debunk these myths about AWP. Well, now that we have recapped the main concepts of AWP, let's dive in and start with the first myth. A pass for a pathogen is for large, complex, and oil and gas projects only. As we move on with the first myth, let's unveil the poll results. We asked uh, to select the statement that you agree the most with, and this myth ranked second place, garnering 30% of the votes. As this myth uh, was in the second place, it suggests a strong level of agreement. The respondents are leaning towards agreeing with it. Whether you agree or not, let's delve into the details to gain a better understanding, because this is not true. AWP is part of operating system requirements. It's about planning and executing with the end in mind. I would like to take a moment to discuss the core principles of implementing it. First, project scope. Understanding the scope of work, the scope of services, what is inside and outside of battery limits. Second, contracting a strategy, addressing contrasting a strategy for the different portions of the project, including design, procurement, and construction. This includes addressing field subcontractors and worst phase planning requirements. Path of construction, defining the construction sequence, the optimal way to build the plant. This becomes the path of construction, the path of the project, and drive engineering and materials. Did you know there is a construction industry research indicating that 15% of total project activities are performed out of sequence? Well, leading on average to 25% higher costs and 33% longer construction schedule. That's why path of construction is fundamental. Let's continue with work breakdown structure. We align the work breakdown structure to work strategy. Construction work areas are the result of the path of construction. Construction work packages become our execution WBS, which is the basis for the installation work packages. Identifying resource requirements is the next one, which goes hand in hand with satisfying those requirements. CWP release, IWP release, and charge range planning our three lines of defense. The key is making sure that everything is in place before the field work starts. Last but not least, monitoring and management, so that we monitor and manage our progress all the way to system completions. Now, take a look at the screen, please. Are any of these principles industry specific or particular to oil and gas? No, they are not. These principles are universal, not specific to any industry. 
I hope you noticed there was nothing specific to oil and gas on the AW on the AWP principles, neither to carbon reduction, hydrogen, chemicals, mining and metals, or infrastructure. So can these principles be applied across projects of different sizes? Yes, they can. Absolutely. Construction is essential across all industries and sizes. Safety and efficiency apply universally. AWP core principles can be scaled and applied as needed, whatever they make sense. So please, this means AWP principles work for projects, big or small, and they can be applicable to any industry. It is just common sense. Let's move on, on to the second myth. AWP can only be implemented if 3D models are available and expensive software is needed. This myth actually sometimes can get even worse. Quite often, AWP is compared to a piece of software or technology. Well, like the previous myth, we asked to select the statement that you agree the most with, and this mid rank in the first place, receiving 48% of the votes. It suggests a high level of agreement, which is concerning. And one of the reasons it is important to continue sharing knowledge across the industry through forums like this one because this is not true. The key with this myth lies in the word need. AWP needs. When AWP works with or without software, it is your choice. AWP is compatible to driving a car. You can choose to use a GPS or SatNav representing the software for guidance, but it is not mandatory. Let's reinforce that AWP is a project delivery methodology based on construction-driven execution. We start by planning the work. It is done in reverse, backwards. We ensure completions needs fit into construction sequence which in turn fits into material planning and design execution. Then we work the plan. This is when, with construction input, the plan is broken down into multiple areas and packages, making sure construction sequence drive engineering deliverables and material delivery. CWP releases support the field installation work packaging preparation. Please also notice at the beginning, it is essential to align on data requirements. Why? Well, AWP data requirements are fundamental to how we execute and build, ensuring effective interfacing for the EPC functions. AWP is a process, not relying on a specific software. It can be deployed with or without 3D models using tools like Excel spreadsheets or integrated databases. In today's digital era, project execution and construction must keep pace. AWP processes and early alignment on data requirements empower us to utilize technology for informed decisions throughout the project life cycle. Tools must be tailored to fit the job. Larger projects require more robust tools, while the smaller ones can be scaled accordingly. Remember, the principles we have discussed remain consistent. It is about finding the right balance. Yes, it is about striking the right balance between people, process, technology, and data, tailored to the project size, type, and industry. 
AWP process breaks down silos and demands input from design, fabrication, and supply chain. Leveraging 3D models, if available, help us to visualize multiple data sources in support of workplace planning. Databases can help us tremendously to manage a large volume of information so that we can be more productive. And this formal process, of course, requires some level of governance to ensure stakeholders remain aligned. So, AWP is a process that balances process, people, and technology for effective data leverage. Now, let's address another myth. No way. The cost of AWP outweigh the benefits. That's just another buzzword, right? Well, like the previous myth, we asked to select the statement that you treat the most with. And this myth ranked in third place, receiving 16% of the votes. It suggests a moderate level of agreement, which means respondents are leaning towards disagreeing with these myths. That's actually good myths. Regardless of your opinion, let's get into the specifics, because this is not true. To debunk this myth, I'd like to begin by mentioning that Construction Industry Institute has developed material that can provide valuable insights into AWP. I would like to highlight some of these tools which I recommend reviewing as they can be eye-opening to improve understanding on AWP. Research Team 272 drafted AWP with robust stakeholder input. The Team 319 demonstrated its effectiveness through 20 case studies, making it a best practice. Team 365 assembled a potent implementation resource, the AWP Concierge. And lastly, an AWP ROI tool, Return on Investment, was developed to empower CII members to measure AWP's impact. Together, they provide a vast foundation of knowledge for project execution. CII proposed the assessment of AWP based on maturity and performance. For the performance, there are six dimensions. Productivity, cost, safety, schedule, quality, and predictability. With the first four, results show that square root shape trends, performance improvements are achieved with an initial fast rate that decreases at higher levels of AWP maturity. These trends are beneficial because they allow for rapid growth or progress. This quick growth helps achieve the benefits in a relatively short amount of time. Then the trend levels off, indicating that further growth is slower. While for the last two, the results exhibit exponential shape trends. Quality and predictability of construction projects grow at an increasing rate with AWP maturity. They are like um, snowballs rolling down the hill, getting bigger and faster as it grows. At Fluor, inspired, inspired by the RT319 methodology, we also do internal assessments of our projects using the same six performance dimension. Let me illustrate this with a case study. Project A, a chemical plant located in Asia with a total installed cost of 1 billion US dollars 
executed over 44 months. This was the first time AWP was implemented in this location. The project implemented AWP during early feed and the results were quite satisfactory. They saw an improvement of productivity around 5% compared with similar projects. It finished within the plan budget and also they achieved 25 million safe work hours without a lost time injury. A total recordable incident rate was 0 0.06, which is a measure of the occupational health and safety based on the number of safety incidents reported against the number of workers present and the number of hours worked. The project finished within the planned schedule despite a COVID-19 pandemic and a natural disaster that happened in that region. They tracked closely the kind of requests for information and they focused on progress and keeping open workfronts at site. Here we have a, an, a spider chart that allows us to compare sample cases to the CII baseline. This helps us scale the project's maturity level and corresponding benefits in each performance dimension. Blue means AWP early stage. Orange is the intermediate level, while green represents high maturity or business transformation. When we look at the spider diagram, we observe that the more it extends towards the outer edges, the more mature the project is. Correspondingly, the benefits of each performance dimension also increase. As indicated by the blue line, entry level implementations have a smaller shape. However, as we progress with the orange line, we witness a significant expansion and enhancement, ultimately leading to the green line, which denotes this stage with the most benefits. When we analyze fluor sample projects at various levels of implementation, we observe on average that predictability, quality, productivity, schedule, and safety exhibit substantial benefits. In terms of the cost, the benefits are of a more moderate degree. This improvement is closely linked to the initial investment and learning curve when pioneering the implementation of new processes and tools. Another way to assess performance is by implementing time on tool studies. At the beginning, three can explain construction industry figures showing that productive time average within the industry was between 32 to 37 percent. Well, Fluor conducts time on tools studies on its projects to measure and optimize craft time utilization. This is an activity analysis. We use a random work sampling technique so that we make spot observations of draft workers following a predefined route throughout work areas, throughout work date, so we categorize each activity and record observations by work area, time, and draft. Once we have a representative and a statistically significant sample size, then we can tabulate and benchmark to floor historical projects. Of the project survey between 2015 and 2021, projects that implemented warfare planning achieve 8.5 higher direct activity productive time than projects that did not. Most 
extract benefits from the structure and detailed causes leading to installation work packages. We also experience an increase in between cycles as these metrics are typically collected at different point in times within the project. To help us visualize the benefits, consider this. Draft labor represents approximately 20% of a project cost. Sometimes it can be even more. So on a billion project, field labor costs 200 million, meaning each 1% increase or decrease in draft productivity is equivalent to $2 million. This correlation should help you scale the impact of draft productivity. In essence, optimizing draft productivity directly impact the overall cost effectiveness and success of a project. With this, I hope you can see AWP impact might be notable at the beginning, but it matures as on time progress. So the gains become even more substantial. With regards to the return on investment estimation, Clients often inquire about the return on investment when implementing AWP. For every dollar spent on AWP, it can be expected to receive X dollars back. So now, how much is X? Is it three? How about five? They will get $5 back for every dollar spent on AWP. But how about five more for the total of 10? Experience has shown this depends on a number of factors. Using CII AWP ROI tool as a reference, it depends on total installed costs, construction duration, cycle time, AWP implementation category, organization maturity, direct labor costs, indirect labor costs, scaffolding costs, engineering, AWP implementation costs. So in the end, projects and organizations can do their own estimates. While ROI is a valuable metric, remember it is just one factor in decision making. Our I calculations are based on assumptions and estimates, so it is important to recognize the inherent uncertainty in the projections. And that's why, when doing this exercise, I would like you to contemplate the cost of doing nothing. What is the cost of doing nothing? This has a significant implications for project safety, productivity, schedule, quality, and predictability. Therefore, please keep in mind, AWP benefits increase with maturity and time. Commit the small, up from, and gradually face it to succeed. The last myth we want to discuss today revolves around three processes originated from distant backgrounds and often misunderstood as exclusive. AWP, Lean, and Building Information Modeling don't fit together. Again, like the previous myth, we ask to select the dreaming, the statement that you dream the most with, and this myth ranks in four place, receiving 6% of the votes. It indicates a low level of agreement, meaning this myth might be going away, and AWP is not seen as exclusive anymore. Regardless of your view, let's examine the details, because this is not true. Let's begin with Lean. Lean is a process that aims to deliver more value by eliminating waste 
processes. General lean principles include defining value, streamlining workflows, and striving for perfection. That is towards more effective processes through collaboration, efficiency, and continuous improvement. The lean construction industry highlights six tenets of lean methodology. Respect for people, prioritizing human well-being, optimize the whole, promoting a holistic approach, eliminate waste, targeting to overlooking efficiencies, focus on flow, emphasizing reliable communication, generate value, understanding a stakeholder's perspective, and continuous improvement. This methodology has proven to enhance productivity, reduce costs, and ultimately lead to more successful and sustainable construction projects. For example, let's picture Lean plus AWP. Imagine a waste-free AWP implementation, applying Lean principles to any part of AWP processes. Consider the impact this will have on productivity and sustainability. Specifically, let's explore differences and commonalities related to the work between AWP and the last planner system. Planning the work. In AWP, dedicated workforce planners plan the work. They typically come from either craft or field engineering background with extensive construction experience and awareness of the required resources. Lean thinking welcomes the help of skilled planners, but they insist that planning not should be separated from doing. According to them, effective planning requires the direct involvement of the last planner, the person closest to the work. Let's continue with packaging the work. With AWP, the path of construction is collaboratively developed through a series of interactive planning sessions. It evolves through CWAs, CWPs, and finally IWPs. While Lean engages through informants and superintendents in direct conversation with one another to map upcoming work, these conversations are often led by skilled facilitators and focus on making and keeping reliable commitments rather than on making assignments. With regards to executing the work, in AWP, this work is executed by foreman and crews who are discipline specific. The work is defined and made ready by leveraging discrete and constraint-free installation work packages. With Lean, foreman and crew are also discipline specific, and the work is defined through weekly work planning processes, with foreman committing to and placing the work to their weekly work plan. AWP and the last planner system utilize the same approach, but both employ different techniques. The two processes share important common themes. AWP focuses on project breakdown into smaller and manageable parts and constraints removal process is well complemented by the Lean Collaborative Management Forums, such as pool planning, look ahead, and performance review at the George Range planning stage, which is our third line of defense when IWPs are integrated into the last planner system and weekly work planning for construction field execution. In the end, it's about introducing last planner system elements to augment the full potential of workforce planning. If you'd like to delve deeper into Lean, Please take a moment to check out this webinar on our YouTube channel. Also, the Construction Industry Institute AWP Community for Business Advancement is progressing on AWP plus Lean. Let's continue with building information modeling. BIM is a collaborative process that creates value throughout the entire life cycle of an asset, relying on shared 3D models and structured data. Also, 1960, 650, a standard is the international standard for management 
of information over the whole life cycle of a built asset usage bin. Different levels of bin represent a particular level of maturity ranging from level zero to six. Starting from level zero with no collaboration, just drawings, followed by level one, a mix of drawings and 3D models, they progress to higher levels, incorporating greater data integration, collaboration, and project lifecycle management, ultimately enabling a level six of sustainability analysis added with the cost estimated and scheduled trading model. Each bean level represents a step forward in using digital tools for more effective and efficient construction projects. Bean plus AWP. Imagine a AWP driven, a data driven AWP empowered by Beam. Let's explore a few aspects, like collaboration. Integrating Beam and AWP offers a powerful solution to break down silos in construction projects. By centralizing information, facilitating real-time updates, enabling collaborative workflows, and ensuring the interoperability. The combination of Beam and AWP streamlines project management fosters cross-disciplinary collaboration and enhances overall project efficiency, resulting in reduced reward and improved project delivery. Second, planning. When creating IWPs, BIM models enable precise identification of installation locations, constraints detection, materials, and resources needed, allowing IWPs to stay aligned with the latest design changes and leading to a smoother execution, improved quality, and minimized reward. And third, unlocking data. The integration of BIM and AWP facilitates data-driven decision-making by removing constraints. BIM provides real-time insights into project status, helping identify bottlenecks and constraints that could delay projects. The two processes complement each other. By following both processes, AWP and BIM, can have the right data collected and available for project teams to make informed decisions, to allocate resources effectively, adjust schedules, and mitigate risks. Even better, artificial intelligence could use such data to explore tons of possibilities to propose the best solution far quicker than a human mind could. Likewise, if you want to learn more about BIM, please take a moment to check out this webinar on our YouTube channel. Also, the European Construction Industry and Constructing Excellence in the UK are exploring the extent of AWP plus BIM. So, having discussed different aspects of Lean and BIM, I hope you can see it is all about finding ways to simplify complexities to become more productive while we also make project execution easier. Thus, let's gather brilliance from all corners to simplify complexities. Look for new ideas from everywhere, and let's continuously find diverse ways to simplify and improve. And that's exactly what we aim to do at FLOOR. We continuously look at integrating the best elements from all these best practices, because that's what we aim to do at FLOOR. There are project management principles proven to work, no need to reinvent the wheel. Um, there are also new processes and technologies that can reinforce and potentiate such principles to make the existing wheels Role smoother. So let's take advantage of them. Now that we have discussed four myths around AWP, let's sum up. Instead of AWP just work for oil and gas projects, let's remember AWP empowers diverse projects scaling effectively in net zero transition. 
Instead of saying, oh, AWP equals 3D models, please remember AWP principles go beyond 3D models, adapting to project management requirements. Instead of AWP as an added cost, please remember benefits grow with AWP maturity. When implementing it, start small and scale up over time. Instead of having AWP competing with Lean or Beam, please remember AWP, Lean, and Beam can be complementary, complementary, enhancing efficiency and collaboration. In conclusion, AWP Dynamics Approach unites and simplifies. Let's harness brilliance from all corners to streamline complexities, empowering projects and enhancing productivity and collaboration. As benefits grow over time, AWP becomes instrumental in constructing the future. Thank you and back to you, Dave. Great, thank you very much, both Dario and Sri. I really enjoyed that presentation. Let's now take a moment to address some of the questions that we received in from the audience during the presentation. So we're going to get started here with uh, a question that has come in. I'm going to direct it to you, Dario. And I think it's a great question to sort of get us kicked off here. Um, the question is, what is the right time to implement AWP? Would it be at the beginning of feed, for example, at the end of feed, perhaps, or in detailed engineering? What are your thoughts on this? Definitely, that's, that's a good question. Uh, a good time to implement AWP would be as early as possible. I would say during, during feed. Uh, implementing AWP during detailed engineering feels a, a bit late because you want to make sure the core principles are implemented during the early stages so that when drawings and materials are uh, specify they uh, are aligned to to the construction sequence all right great uh that's a great way to um set the foundation for a few more uh q a um activities here i'll move to the next one i'll stick with you dario on this one uh how does awp benefit small projects is the question pass it back to you well, in simple terms, AWP is like a well-organized kitchen for cooking a small meal. So it ensures you have all the ingredients ready and each step is planned, making the process faster and more efficient. So it definitely helps the small projects to run smoothly. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Sri, I see, I see you're still on the call with us there. That's great. I, I, um, I'm going to pass this next question over to you and ask your advice on this. And it's around um, CII. We did make reference in the presentation at one point around the CII research. And the question is, is CII research available to all owner companies or to only those who are members? Can you help us with that one, Sri? Yeah, Dave. Uh, the owner, the, the research, uh, what CIA has done is available for all. Probably uh, Dario is a member of uh, CIA. Maybe he can uh, give more light on this. Uh, absolutely. I will say there is, a there is plenty of material that is available free of charge. And you can go to the CII website and you'll find summary information and presentations that are, are available to all. But also there, there is a, a, a library of research and more material that is available for members only. So basically it's a mix of both. Okay, very good. Thank you both very much for that. Um, I'll move to the next question here that's come in. Um, you know, on projects, we um, do often face challenges, of course, despite all of our best efforts. And the question is, what are common challenges when implementing AWP? Well, implementing AWP is like learning a new skill. It requires training, coordination, 
and commitment from the team. Sometimes there might be resistance or difficulties in adapting, but with practice and support, it becomes smoother over time. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. Um, here's another one in regards to um, AWP and its effect on uh, productivity as it pertains to labor. So I'm going to read it as it's posed. Does AWP increase productivity in both indirect labor as well as direct labor? Daria, would you like to uh, comment to that one, please? Uh, absolutely. I think this is a good question because it, it not only it improves productivity on the red labor, it also helps in the red labor. And I would like to add as well, so you can get some saving um, and stuff falling too. Uh, imagine, let's say, I think we need to look at the bigger picture, right? So imagine for a moment that you have a million size project, let's say with a TAC of half million, um, by implementing AWP, let's say you improve your schedule by two months. So it's two months that will benefit all, right? Will benefit the client, the, let's say the PCMA contractor, if it's the case, or the construction contractor. And that also includes indirect labor. Okay, very well. Thank you, Dario. Um, there's a few other questions who can, that's come in here. Um, here's, I think, a good one. Uh, who owns the AWP process at the end of the day? Is it the owners or is it the EPC companies, Dario? Well, I think we need to start to think more on a, on a collaboration. Uh, I think uh, it's important the owner to to drive and request a AWP from, from the beginning. Um, in the end, will be mostly the EPC, the one who's going to implement when defining the construction sequence and the packages. But I have to say it's a collaborative effort. So it requires each each one of us uh, need to play, uh, we need to play our part. So with pet owners to to demand and require a AWP as, as a way to, to improve productivity and APC contractors will will do uh, their best to uh, to um, implement AWP within our work processes. Uh, and even I can get I, I, I can tell more and we hope also technology providers implement uh, AWP more in, into their software and uh, suppliers also get it into get on board. So that's, that's why I mean it's, it's a collaborative effort. It starts with the owner, but we almost play a part. Just to add uh, to Dario, uh, because the, the push uh, comes from the owner. Uh, as you see that a lot of uh, equipments are there in the in the plant and all need to be ordered on time and it should be at right time at at site so the push is from the owner and uh, then uh, and the EPC company takes it out takes it on from that great thank you very much both of you uh, I think we've got time for one more question we're getting close to the top of the hour here um, and I'd just like to, Dario, ask you one last question here. And that is, can you elaborate more on how BIM enhances the effectiveness of AWP, which I know was um, one of the key points of your presentation? Well, BIM acts like a powerful system to, to AWP. So it provides it detailed training model of the project, enabling more precise planning and coordination. It's like uh, having a high definition map to navigate through the project with maximum uh, accuracy. But if you actually think about, let's say AWP being and Link working together, you could think of AWP as a project manager, B might be the visual guide, uh, and Lean will be the efficiency coach, right? So the AWP plans and schedules being provides all the visual and data representation and Lean ensures the process is, is, is a streamlined and ways is minimized. So it's like a well-coordinated thing. 
That's great. Okay, well, thank you very much. I really appreciate your uh, perspective on that. Uh, getting close to the top of the hour here, it looks like that's uh, probably all the time that we have for questions today. Uh, but before we do close, uh, thank you again, both Dario and Sri, for a great webinar and certainly the time that you've committed and spent with us today. And I'd also like to thank you uh, to our audience for attending today. It's certainly been a pleasure being your moderator. Please continue to stay informed of these events by visiting the Floor Innovation Builders page on floor.com or following our social media channels using hashtag Innovation Builders. If you'd like, we can send email notifications on future webinars as well. To do so, please email us at innovation.builders at floor.com with opt-in in the subject line. We appreciate your attention and thank you again for dialing in today. If you have any questions or require additional information, please email innovation.builders at floor.com and someone from our team will get back to you. From all of us at the Innovation Builders team, have a great day. Thank you.